All right, great to see everybody. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. I'm going to get into a little Madeline Soto this afternoon. Um, streaming live, Facebook, Twitch, X, YouTube, and I got to go on Instagram right now. One second. Can we do it? Can we get onto Instagram? Instagram's impossible to get onto. Ooh. Oh, here it is. Let's do it. No, nope, not happening. Instagram not happening. Anyway, uh, let's get a few more folks in here. But I uh, want to talk about Madeline Soto because a couple of big developments that um, have occurred in the last several days. Um, haven't really spoken about it here on my live stream. Talked about it on television a little bit on my show. So um, <clears throat> to me... Well, one thing everyone's talking about, and everyone everyone's talking about this video, and this was the video of Stephen Stearns uh, being transported. Right? We haven't seen much of him because he's he, he's waived all of his appearances in court, so we haven't seen or heard from him since he's been charged. At some point, you got to be in court. That, that's the way our system works. I mean, at some point, you got to be in court. So his trial's coming up. Like there's a trial date for the for the initial charges. And, you know, I know, you know, we all know trial doesn't happen that fast, right? It's not gonna well, it's a trial date until it's not a trial date. That's the way I look at it. Like the trial is scheduled and will happen until the judge says it's not going to happen. And chances are it won't happen because it's so quick and there's potentially other charges, but I look at it as a prosecutor like I am. This is not a hard case to prosecute. It's it's about um, taking his phone and putting it in through uh, witnesses, the experts who downloaded the images, um, the chain of custody people who took possession of it. Um, and, and that's it. I mean... <laughs> You may have a couple other witnesses testify, but it's an actually it's a pretty quick trial for all these images that are on his phone. You know, you need the expert to go through the images and explain how he or she determined that they came from the phone, when they were placed on the phone, how old they are, and and to authenticate uh, these files. That's all you need, and you need the obviously the officer who took possession of the phone. You may want to bring in some people um, where he purchased the phone from, maybe someone who is a custodian of records of some of the, the, the phone records, the bills, everything else, just to tie the phone to him. But apparently what's on the phone is, is, is there's a term in the law called re ipsa, re ipsa loquitur, which means the, the, the thing speaks for itself. It's like it speaks for itself. You 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 have the images. The crime is is possessing these images, and then the crime is also what is depicted in the images. And apparently, from these images, they're able to tell that yeah, it is uh, Stephen Stearns doing what he's accused of doing to Madeline Soto, and the victim is Madeline Soto. So you have to you have to identify her in the in the images. So. Maybe you call a relative. Um, you could call a teacher. You could call anyone that knows her. Say, oh, yeah, that's her. Um, you can authenticate where the video was recorded by taking a look at the background and then take a look at the, the home they were living in. I mean, it's not a hard case. A handful of witnesses, and he's, he's done for like the rest of his life. Now, he may want to delay it. He may, his attorney may want more time, um, but maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. Maybe Stephen Stearns won't want more time. Prosecutors should be able to do this quickly. Like I always say, it's so hard to prove these cases. This is one case that is not as difficult as most for prosecutors. You still have the same burden of proof beyond any and all reasonable doubt, but the evidence it, it literally speaks for itself. It is what it is. It are the images on the phone. And it's obvious who it is, and it's obvious what it is. So through a couple of witnesses, I'm just checking my phone, make sure I don't have any messages from work. Um, 
So this trial's not hard, and it's scheduled to happen soon in May. So it may happen in May. Chances are it won't, but until it's delayed, I am going to prepare for that trial. So uh, that's the, so he's going to have to show up. He needs to be in the courtroom for the trial. Like to to waive your appearance at your own trial. That is like, but we've seen it just recently on court TV. Um, Adam Montgomery in the Harmony Montgomery case ended up not showing up. He was there for jury selection, and then he wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't show up. So the, the the judge had to put a lot on the record in order to go forward without the defendant there. Um, same could potentially happen here, I guess. I guess it could. If he really doesn't want to show his face, highly unusual, and most judges were not permitted. They'll they'll make him come into the courtroom. You know, you, you put the cuffs on, you drag him into the courtroom. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how that, that transpires down in Central Florida. Um, but a lot of people talking about this because we got to hear him speak uh, for the first time. Um, some people criticizing the the officer for speaking to him, but um, a couple of things, a couple of things in, in, in play there, right? One is, I think, for the officer is a safety issue. You re, you 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 create this rapport with your. I mean, that's what you do. You you transport people who are criminals, who are potentially dangerous, potentially killers, who are at a desperate point in their life and may do desperate things. So, I think one of the strategies is always to try to diffuse as much as possible. Diffuse create a little bit of uh, rapport um, so everybody stays safe, right? The, the, the officer himself plus anyone else in the area. You just want to calm things down. That's what they do inside prisons and jails all the time. They come up with ways to calm the masses. Well, this is a one-on-one -on -one situation. I mean, this is a potential killer who's, who's obviously facing the rest of his life behind bars. So anytime you move him from point A to point B, it's a thing. It's not just, ho, 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 yeah, it's just Stephen Stearns, a guy that worked at Disney. No, it is a person who is cornered. And you don't know how they're going to react to this situation. We've seen outbursts. We saw, saw the guy in in in, um, in Las Vegas that leaped over the, the leaped over the judge's bench and went out and tried to kill her. My friend's son, who's the law clerk, had to pull had to pull him off to prevent him from murdering the judge because that was a guy who was cornered. He was going back to prison. You don't know how people are going to act or react. So I I, I can't criticize um, the officer for for handling the situation and the rapport the way he did. Uh, we got to hear Stephen Stern speak. Got a little flavor for. Uh, who this guy is, uh, small flavor, but um, flavor nonetheless. So um, that's part of what I want to talk about today. But I want to, I want there's more of a headline, but I first want to check in and see who's with us today. Of course, she's here, Melly, <laughs> the best content ever. Oh, thank you, Melly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of great content, though. There is a ton of great true crime content um, on all platforms, but especially on YouTube. Uh, some of these uh, true crime live streamers are really doing great, great work. And uh, uh, But I appreciate it, Melly. Thank you so much. After Dark, you're all the rage today. Thank you, After Dark. After Dark was the name of one of my shows on HLN. It was called HLN After Dark. Uh, we launched that program in the middle of the Jody Arias trial. And not in the middle, it's towards the beginning of the trial, uh, but it became the highest rated show to ever premiere on that network. And uh, yeah, it was that was something. That was HLN After Dark. This is After Dark Records. Music, baby. Uh, Michelle L., I've been watching you since the Danielle Van Dam case. Wow. Danielle Van Dam. Yes, that was out in uh, San Diego. Um, Danielle Van Dam, little girl who was abducted by a local um, pedophile killer. And I remember the big thing with that, there were a couple of parts of that story, um, but like he, the evidence was there. Everyone knew um, that Westerfield was the killer. It was a death penalty case. Um, 
but the prosecution was willing to take the death penalty off the table if he would reveal, I got to sneeze one second. I'm allergic to um, David Westerfield. Anyhow, and it was like moments before prosecutors were about to give him the deal. And the exchange was no death penalty for you. In exchange, you tell us where she is. You tell us where Danielle is because they couldn't find her. She was a missing child. But the evidence was all over. He had like a little, as I recall, some sort of a mobile home type of RV where everything happened and they found all this evidence. Um, but just before that deal, they found her and they went forward and, and were able to convict him. Um, yeah, I did cover that case. And I couldn't believe it. I was in San Diego and it like, I was getting ready to do a live shot and like, like is that rain? Is that a little bit of rain? I was like, wow. Uh, it didn't pour though, just a light sprinkling where, you know, usually perfect weather. Uh, thank you, Robin. Appreciate it. A festive picture there, a little bit on the side. Um, oh, here's a here's a question. What's your thought on the Apple River? Not to change topic, uh, but we are changing topic a little bit, Lenny. Apple River stabbing, that's a, the case we're covering on Court TV right now. Um, unfortunate situation. An older man may have had a few drinks, may have had a few drinks, um, is in a river, the Apple River, it's in Wisconsin, and apparently is searching for his friend's cell phone that he may have dropped in the river and he's got goggles on and apparently he goes near a bunch of teenagers teenagers are a little rowdy too um and i don't know if he bumped into their tubes or something happened and it, and it became a little bit of a confrontation they started accusing him of being a, a a pedo right and um it got ugly it got ugly it got physical um he was getting shoved he was getting pushed in the water but then he pulled out his weapon and uh, and one of the young men lost his life and um, he's claiming self-defense and all this. A lot of it's caught on video. Um, tough case, tough case, um, tough case. It, it, it would be some passion provocation, like an imperfect self-defense is, is probably what happened here because the level of force he used appeared to be greater than the level of force that was being used against him. He escalated. Um, but it's a tough case. It's a tough case. It's, it's really, really, really sad. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on that too, right? Uh, on that case, I know. And they may have come back with a, um, a verdict while I was getting ready for the show. I'm not even sure. Um, but thank you, Lundy. Appreciate it. Robin, favorite YouTuber of all the YouTubers. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me get to what, what I think is the big news, and I talked about this on my show, it's 8 o'clock uh, to 10 o'clock every night on Court TV, um, and I, I talked about it on my show when it happened, uh, but I want to get into some detail with you and flush it out just a little bit more, and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen, which I, I think is important. Um, so this is about the autopsy report, right? Now, the autopsy report, and this is what we got back from the uh, medical examiner, Please be, please be advised, and this is significant, and you might think, you, know, you might read this and say, oh, it's like wah, 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 because we've all been waiting to hear about cause and manner, cause and manner of death, you know, from the medical examiner and what was found, what happened to Madeline. Um, but please be advised that the autopsy report you requested is unavailable for release under Florida Statute 406. And we've talked about this. The autopsy report of a minor whose death was related to an act of domestic violence held by a medical examiner is confidential and exempt uh, per sections of the state constitution. Right. OK, this is huge. Now, it might be like, oh, we're not going to we're not going to know anything. We know a lot from this, from this, from this. We know a lot. We know a lot. Domestic violence. And that's why I'm saying, like, time is running out on mom right now. Time is running out on mom. Because this tells me the report and everything was finalized. It's been determined that this was an act of domestic violence. Um, hello, two people. Two adults in that house, one we know has a lot of problems, but the other is in the house. 
Now, why am I saying time is running out? If at this point she is not cooperating in in full, I mean, full cooperation to the point of, of saying, I will testify in front of the grand jury on this. If she is not doing that, that's a problem. That's a problem because of the statements that she's made. I mean, she has made statements that run completely counter to this. Completely counter to this. Right? Her statements are all, oh, we drove her and dropped her off. Well, you know, uh, Stefan uh, dropped her off. I saw her getting dressed in the morning. Uh, Eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. See, all of that runs completely counter to what we're seeing here, which is domestic violence. Which means that um, the the person or persons responsible live with Madeline. And from my understanding, there's only two of them. One's locked up. What's the other one doing? Right? So there's only two of them. There's only two of them. So now you know that they know. Okay? You know that they know. And they've come to their conclusion. You need to be, you are now in a position, think of, think, put all the pieces together here, what we know, put the pieces together. This is domestic violence. You're in the house and your boyfriend's in the house. He's locked up. If you are innocent, he's the one that did it. You need to be outraged. You must be beside yourself and you must be running down to the state attorney's office to be the first witness to testify against this guy. That's what you need to be doing. So if you're not doing that, that's a problem. Think about it for a second. Your child is the victim of domestic violence, but it, but it, if it's not you, you know who it is. You all have solved my case. You've solved, you, you've figured out what happened to my daughter. I know charges haven't, haven't been um, lovely yet, but let me testify. Whatever you need, I will tell you. Whatever you need, I will be there to get justice for my daughter. That has to be happening now. If that's not happening now, time is running out on her. It's, it's, it's not good because of the statements that have been made already. Locked in, locked in. But now you know they know everything. They figured it out. So whatever he was telling you was wrong. If you were just, you know, repeating what he was telling you, that's wrong. And you need to go down there and be like, you tell them anything and everything you know. Everything. Period. No question. Now I have lawyers on my show all the time that say, don't say anything. Keep the mouth shut the whole time. Because you could be, you could be implicated. Well, let me tell you, you keep quiet and you say nothing, you don't cooperate, you're not volunteering to be the first witness against this guy, and you're not even speaking out publicly about the outrage that, oh my goodness, it was domestic violence. Like, if you're not doing that, <laughs> does that not have certain implications about your knowledge and what you knew? I mean, to me, the, the what is the response of a parent in a house where your child is the victim of DV and you know you had nothing to do with it? Well, I'm presuming all that, right? I'm saying like, you know, you didn't, you better run down there. The clock is ticking. The clock is tick tock, tick tock. Nora, thank you, Nora. Appreciate it. All the way from Amsterdam. I've never been there. Never been there. I've not made that trip. But uh, glad we're reaching you in Amsterdam. By the way, we're live streaming on um, YouTube, obviously, uh, Facebook, um, X, and I couldn't get it going on. Instagram is just difficult with my software to get it going. 
And we're coming to TikTok soon. Soon. Not yet, though. We're not there yet. And thank you so much, Nora. Who else is with us? Rowena. Thank you, Rowena. Ooh, what a mysterious picture. Extremely mysterious. Um, so this, well, you know, this is like a nothing burger. It's not a nothing burger. This is like an everything burger. What was released. Telling us you can't release it told us. It's like, tell me without telling me, right? That's what they did. The medical examiner told us without telling us the conclusion that they've reached, that the report's done. So I can't release it to you. It's not like, the, oh, the report's not done. The report's done, and we've come to our conclusion as to what happened here. It's a crime, number one. It's DV, number two. Two people in the house. TikTok. Melly showing love. If uh, so, that makes her negligent. If not involved, well, here we go. Okay, okay. So let's let's look at this. If 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 she is not actually like hands on in any of this, but she knows something's going on. What's her level of culpability criminally? Right. Child endangerment, that, that seems like a, a logical place to go. Could you implicate her for the death if she knew something was happening? Mm. Now, if, 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 she, if she has actual knowledge, well, there's two, two parts of this, right? If she, Actual knowledge and covers it up and misleads obstruction of justice, accessory after the fact, things like that. That that's very problematic. But if she's oblivious or 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 you know just just didn't know and trusted this man for whatever reason, and I don't know her level of mental competency, right? We really don't know. All all we know is what we've seen on the TV interviews where she seems. You know, she doesn't seem like there's something terribly wrong with her, but maybe she's very um, trusting, for for lack of a better word. Um, but if she actually didn't know, could you get her on? Well, you should have known. That's a tougher sell. That's a tougher sell. That's a tougher sell. So the the negligence—it's it, it's not really a negligence theory in this case. It'll be, it, she'd have to have some knowledge. Because if she had no knowledge, um, it would be very difficult under these circumstances to charge her with anything. She becomes a victim, right? She's a victim. And she would she would be able to deliver a victim impact statement uh, at the end of the case if there was a conviction. Um, but I think um, part of it, and and, and I think understanding what was happening in that home is, is crucial but is the most difficult part of this for prosecutors to peel back and understand right because you're not there unless there are communications and that's again where the phones come in the text messages the emails um phone calls at particular times for particular lengths of time um cell phone activity of where your phone is pinging. If you have anything like that, that shows some level of coordination and knowledge, then, then big problems for mom, big problems for mom. I, I just think looking at it, there's a problem right now. If she is not down there fully cooperating and just saying, what can I do? Let's get this guy, right? That's what a victim does. That's what a parent does. Uh, when a case involving what happens to your, your your daughter has apparently been solved. No, it doesn't negate anything, baby. And I think what you're talking about are all the charges that he's facing now. No, the fact that she's deceased. No, you, you, you just need someone to identify her in those photos. As long as you get a witness to identify her in the photos, then you can fulfill all the elements of those crimes. So uh, baby 2023, thank you so much. I hope that uh, clarifies that part of the, uh, of, 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 that case. And again, that case is still on the docket for trial in May. 
Starlar, we need better answers from mom, especially with Stephanie Jail. She needs to talk. Is she the culprit? She acts like it, right? Well, right. So two parts to this, right? Let's talk about um, just the way a parent reacts to this, right? Is she grieving? Is she devastated by this broken trust? Right. Again, we're all presuming here that she has nothing to do with this. Right. And that's that's how, you know, the presumptions are in our system. But this level of broken trust and this level of heartbreak and losing your child and losing your child, apparently at the hands of someone who was living with you that you brought into the home. Um, you would think that there'd be some outrage and but like she she has no obligation to speak publicly. Um, and she may not want to, that may not be her personality, right? She spoke publicly when her child was missing, trying to, to find her. Um, but at this point, the conversations need to be with the state attorney's office because there is information that she can provide that no one else can provide in this case. And actually in both cases, both for the death of her daughter and for what was found on the phone, she can provide incredibly important information and needs to be a cooperating witness like very cooperative to the fact of okay okay mom we'll call you when we need you we we know you're there um and just you know whatever whatever you guys need i i have whatever you need and just try to remember as much as you can and 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 be there for your daughter that's what you would hope is happening if that's not happening then exactly she's she's acting somewhat like the, the the culprit in all this danielle great to, oh danielle took her hat off for the picture thank you um and on her birthday too cruel cruel mm. think about that you just turned 13 you just turned 13 you find you know all of us as children you know once we get a certain age it's like that's the big we can't i can't wait to be a teenager like your parents are like, no, I don't want a teenager in the house. But like all us kids, I still consider myself a kid, right? Um, are like, yeah, I can't wait till I'm a teenager. Oh, oh, I'm not. No, I'm 12. I'm 12. I'm a teenager now. Like everything changes. Such a big moment uh, for a child. Such a big moment. And, and to have her taken at that time, that's cruel. Cruel. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, Teresa with a super sticker that looks appears to be some sort of a fish. I cannot read that fish, but there is a fish there. Um, yeah, and, and, right. There's no obligation to speak publicly, publicly. Um, you, you could come out though. You could come out and make a statement. You, you could come out and say, or release a statement through your lawyer. You know, we're happy at the investigation. We're glad that she's been found and we are cooperating fully, you know, something like that. You can do that if you want. You know, famous people um, do that sometimes um, who have like public relations experts. But I mean, the level of sophistication of her, not necessarily. But, um, you know, she's got her family down there. And, and, I, and I just hope that, you know, her and her family are, coming to grips with this and and are ready to help um, the state attorney in their investigation and um, at trial if needed. Innocent until proven guilty, but we know that's not really true. All right, time for a, a quick uh, legal lesson on, on this, right? So the presumption of innocence is what Every criminal defendant has in court at the beginning of a trial and every every moment before that trial begins. So whether they're indicted, arrested, whatever, throughout that entire period, they are presumed innocent, right? According to the state attorney, we presume they're innocent. We'll, we'll prove, but we believe we have the evidence to prove it, right? Um, and prosecutors are very careful when they make statements. They always include that. However, however, in the court of public opinion, you see, we have 
the First Amendment, which allows us to express our opinions based upon whatever we want to base it upon. My opinion, that person's not nice. My opinion, that person... Now, now the, the, the thing you have to be careful with is in accusing someone of a crime is the protections that individuals have under our defamation laws, like Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was accused of being a wife beater by Amber Heard. Not in those exact words, but that's what that trial was about. So he civilly sued her and she was found liable for it and had to pay money, which she ended up not paying. Um, she paid a small amount that Johnny Depp donated and then the rest Johnny Depp said, you know, let's just be done with this. No appeals. You don't have to pay me anything. Let's move on. I proved my point in court. And, and he did. And he got his reputation back. You hear that the thing, where, where do you go to get your reputation back when you've been falsely accused of something? You got to go to court. That's where you got to go to get your reputation back. Johnny Depp did. So that's where you got to be careful. Now, if, if you see evidence, you say, look, look, this evidence really makes her look bad. That's your opinion. It makes her look bad. Right? So that's not defamatory. That's like a, a protected opinion. I believe that this, you know, the, the videotape makes it look like she did something wrong here. Makes it look like you know, she's a killer or he's a killer. All right? Those, those, those types of statements are fine. Those are opinion statements, which are generally protected. See, where news organizations like Court TV and others have to be careful is where you report facts or you report things as facts that include information that could damage someone's reputation um, that is not true, right? Now, if it's a regular civilian and it's not true, and they can prove that it's not true, or you can't prove that it is true, then you could be held liable. Now, if it's a celebrity like a Johnny Depp, you have to make accusations that you know aren't true. Like, because, you know, newspapers make mistakes all the time. They may report that um, John Doe, some ordinary citizen, you know, committed this robbery. And then John Doe says, I did not commit this robber robbery, sues the newspaper and wins because he didn't commit the robbery. Right. But if it's Johnny Depp and you said Johnny Depp committed the robbery and he didn't, well, um, he's got to prove that you actually knew he didn't commit the robbery and still printed it. That's the malice. That's the malice, actual malice. Um, and that's what happened in Johnny Depp's case. He proved it, that she knew it wasn't true because she knew that she wasn't a victim of uh, DV at his hands. Hey, we're up to um, 3,500 live viewers. Thank you so much on all our platforms. Uh, fantastic on this early evening. Uh, let's go to Linda. Exit 153. Fantastic. 153, 153. That's that's a little bit north. 153. Is that you're getting close to Bergen County? Is that like Clifton? Is that Clifton? Is that exit is is that Route 46? 153 or Route 3? Is that Route 3? Right on the border? Like like uh Passaic, Essex, Bergen County? All right. I got to remember that stuff. I should know that. I should know that. You know, mom looked like a deer in the headlights during her interviews. Yes, I agree. I think she, I think he had her so bamboozled. She was mesmerized by him. I think he was her priority. Right. So what, what I'm seeing from you is that bamboozled means she, she didn't have the actual knowledge, right? She didn't know. He kind of like had this, some he was able to manipulate her and control her and sort of um, convince her of certain things right and and that's that's very possible in this she may be naive she may be i you know i i know very little but we know what we saw in those interviews and it was kind of creepy when he was kind of walking behind her and it was it, it was made you uncomfortable um yeah but sometimes there, there's there's you know, men and women who, you know, have children, but, you know, they just fall for someone and they, and they get influenced and suddenly their child 
And I think I've seen this TV movie about 25,000 times, right? Where the child is no longer the priority and this new person is evil and the child can see it, but the parent can't see it, right? I've seen that movie on Lifetime, right? Like 25,000 times I've seen that movie and I watch it every time. All right, Rowena. Danielle has a response. I could see him fooling Jen for sure with her bi, uh, with her bipolar single mom. I heard she was going to school and working at one point, and she works at Disney, believes in fairy tales. Right? Well, she may have been a busy mom too, right? So you know, he's not busy. I mean, he's busy up to no good, but like he's not, he's not out there like working hard for a living. Right. That's I think she was working a little harder than he was trying to make herself better. Probably why she's working on her daughter's birthday, because he's not because he's a bum. Um, and that relationship uh, is, is so key. And if. If, in fact. She is cooperating and as a credible witness, she can shed light on, on what was happening in that house, on how this could possibly happen. Like she has all that information. She knows when she was working, when he was watching her, all of that. That's information that investigators, it's difficult to get otherwise. It really is tough to get. And that's why if she's factually innocent, I hope she's not just afraid to get wrapped up in this and is just saying nothing because she obviously is a potential person of interest in all this. She's also a potential victim in all of this. But uh, the bottom line is she is an incredibly important witness to all of this as well. And we got Janie tonight. Circumstantial cases are difficult, can be done, take accountability for pastor justice. Loss of life not speaking is not helping. Right. Not speaking is not helping. Um, circumstantial cases, though, and, and circumstantial evidence and circumstantial cases get a bad rap in our system of justice um, because arguably circumstantial evidence sometimes is, is better than direct evidence. Some types of direct evidence. Like a videotape is direct evidence, right? It's a videotape, if it's a videotape of the crime, like what was found on his phone, that's direct evidence. That's the best evidence. That's the best evidence. That's like, but eyewitness testimony, someone witnesses the crime, is direct evidence. But we have learned through the years that eyewitness testimony is some of the most unreliable evidence in a trial. Three people see something. You're going to get three different versions of what happened, sometimes three vastly different versions, sometimes slightly different versions. But they've done experiments on this as well. It's, it's, it's direct evidence because I am the one I witnessed the crime itself. Like DNA is not direct evidence. DNA is like circumstantial evidence. Your DNA is at the crime scene. That's a circumstance. For There is a circumstance where your DNA ended up at the crime scene. Well, under what circumstances would it end up there? Well, if you were there at the time of the crime. That's circumstantial evidence. Direct evidence is eyewitness confessions, which sometimes can be coerced. So you have to uh, really evaluate the nature of the confession. How long were they being inter interrogated? Um what was said during the interrogation? How old is the, the person who's being interrogated? Um, so that's other direct evidence. And then uh, to me, the video is the best. The audio is pretty good, depends upon the nature of the audio. But video, you see and you hear um, what is alleged to have happened and you see it actually happen. That's the best evidence. But we do know sometimes cell phone video, surveillance video is a little grainy. Sometimes, you know, a cell phone is moving around. Sometimes you don't see everything. Sometimes the video starts um, a few seconds into the alleged crime. So you don't see how it started. So in those cases, while that is direct evidence, it's, it's doesn't tell the whole story. Doesn't tell the whole story. So that's my take. Uh, so circumstantial cases, they are difficult. But um, if you do it the right way as a prosecutor, you can make, make them more compelling. Um, because especially if you have 
many circumstances or circumstances that have no other logical explanation. Like, for instance, in Idaho, the DNA of the defendant on the sheath at the scene of the crime underneath the victims. Under what other circumstance would that be there other than that he was the one who did it? <sighs> Thank you, Janie. Super sticker. All right. Gray Hughes in the house. Gray Hughes been on my program, doing great work there. Given that Jen obviously stated uh, things for Stefan that she didn't know was true or not like the 8 a.m. sighting, how do we know Madeline made it home after the party? Law enforcement likely knows the answer. So, can we infer anything from this? It's DV. So, DV doesn't have to take place in the home. It could take place in the car. Um, it can take place wherever you are, but it's generally between members of the same household or in some sort of a relationship like that, like a mother, daughter, stepfather. That's what he, he she called them stepfather, uh, stepdaughter relationship. Um, we don't know. I, I don't, we don't know. Here's the thing though. I mean, the, the 8 a.m. sighting is the is the real problem, right? Because if she doesn't make it home from the party, that is just an outright lie. It's not like a mistake. Like you can make a mistake like it was 7 o'clock, it was 7 a.m., not 8 a.m. when she was getting dressed. Or let's see, is it possible that I looked at a clock and in, was it daylight savings time yet? No, I don't think it was. Was it? No, it wasn't daily savings time yet. But, you know, I thought it was eight, but it was seven. Like that could sort of be explained, sort of, uh, maybe. But if she didn't make it home from the party, that's just an outright lie. And the whole night is spent figuring out what to do, what's the cover story. And that would apparently be where the two of them might be working together. Uh, so even if her her hands did not actually do it, She's coming in after the fact um, as an accessory and covering everything up. That is a huge problem for her. Huge, huge problem for her. So um, figuring out where and when it happened. And if that is the fact, if, if that's what happened, she needs to run down to the state attorney's office right now because she'd be the greatest witness. She could put the pieces together. She could put together the timeline she could probably give um, information about exactly how it happened. And then, you know, the testimony of the ME in conjunction with her testimony, you could, you could prove this case out. You'd have to give her a bit of a deal, whatever that deal is. Um, she could try to mitigate her involvement by saying she was scared of him. She was intimidated by him. She was afraid she would be the next victim. I mean... And thanks, Greg. The bottom line is just like under every scenario we're talking about today, time is running out. She needs to be running down to the state attorney's office. Has to be. There's no, there's no way, there's no way around it at this point. There's no way around it. From what I'm hearing from the ME, there's no way around it. That 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 ship has sailed. The I dropped her off at school ship has sailed. There is zero evidence of that. Zero. And the evidence that they have talked about is the exact opposite of that. Ray Luca, she's working from home and Maddie was not wearing what mother described. Was she wearing or not wearing what mother described? The 911 calls that we listened to that were made by, it seems like, relatives, the 
a woman on the phone asks, what was she wearing? And she said something about the hoodie. Was it the green hoodie? I am trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Uh, but it's but it's clear that the person on the phone gives a specific description about a hoodie. So does that match up? Does that match up with what she was wearing? Because that's what was told to the 911 operator. And I think in the first call, I think it was the first call that was made. Thank you, Ray Luca. Melly, of course, law enforcement controls the narrative for whatever reason. Sometimes they reveal things strategically and sometimes they need help. They need help. And when they need help, they let you know. They absolutely do. Sometimes they don't need help. And when they don't, that's when they zip up and say very little until there is an arrest. And then usually there is some information that comes out. And a lot of times the information comes through the arrest affidavit. Uh, sometimes the prosecuting attorney or the local sheriff will have a, a press conference uh, to announce um, and provide some of the information related to the case. That is Zuko the dog, if you hear anything in the background. Yeah, for some reason, the dog doesn't think people have a right to walk down the street past our house. All right. Got a lot of great comments today, by the way. 3,600. 3,600 live right now. All right. And yes, we do have moderators. Thank you, Mona. Gen X Granny on the job. Frankie Figs on the job. Um, keeping law and order, helping us through all of this. Yes. Um, thank you, Sue. I and, and a judge can a judge can order it. I mean, a judge can order a witness uh, to, to, to come inside the courtroom who's under subpoena. You have them arrested. You have them dragged into the courtroom. It's happened. It's happened. Um, I, I, if a defendant waives his or her right to be there through counsel, I, it, it's tough in a case that's that is going to have the level of stakes that, that is, as much as that stake as there is in this case. You're talking about life sentences and potential death sentences in, in all of this, and to to waive your right. Um, and I'll guarantee you in all those cases, once the appellate lawyers get their hands on it, that's the first issue. The defendant wasn't there. So it has to be a, you know, a knowing waiver of rights, but you have to sort of do that in person in court. So you got to, you have to actually show up to waive your right to be there. It seems to me, if I was a judge, I would drag them in there, drag them in there. Um, we'll see how, how, the, how the judges handle it if he continues with this behavior of not wanting to show up in court. Nefertiti is back today. I wanted to give mom the benefit of the doubt. Me too. Me too. I be, and and for, the, for the reason, mostly for the reason of, for Madeline, I mean, to be betrayed by your mother, I hope that didn't happen. I mean, she was being tortured as it is um, by one person. And, and I just hope that her mom didn't knowingly let all of this happen and betray that trust. I also don't act. I also don't act a lot of the time how people would want me to in situations. But the more I find about the case, the more the mom isn't. Look yeah, I agree. It's, it's not looking good. Now, there could be things happening behind the scenes that we don't know about. She could be testifying tomorrow in front of a grand jury. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. But there are things that she knows. There are things that she could testify to that no one else in the world could. And prosecutors have to tiptoe through this. Got to tiptoe um, through all of this to um, 
make sure that you're getting justice and you're getting the truth, that you're not overlooking someone who is responsible for what happened to Madeline. And sometimes it's a tough call. Sometimes it's a tough call. Star is a little salty. Not a mod. By the way, and, and, and I know this is like, it's probably been a thing for a long time, but like, like chocolate and salt together, like that is good. Like a, a, a chocolate covered pretzel. Like I don't need a lot of that stuff because I'm type one diabetes. But like in the last couple of years, I've been like, that's the way I like it. It's like really, really good. So sometimes salty can be good. Just, But if you have too much salt, if something is too salty, that's when you run into problems. So I'm sure you'll be fine, Starlar. All right. Oh, yes. This is what this is. Can you guys help me out? I'm going to have to put this down there. If you could follow me on TikTok, follow me on TikTok. Um, for me to simulcast on TikTok from my PC, to go live from a PC, I, I think I need like 900 more followers on TikTok. And it's just my name, Vinnie Politan. So thanks for reminding me. I got to put that in the little scroll also. Um, Please, please, if you just go to TikTok and follow me, that way I can stream this live on TikTok too. Uh, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok too. Um, uh, because you can't do it from your PC. It's I have like it's like in beta mode because TikTok really wants you to do everything from the phone. But I do this from my PC. So to live stream on TikTok on your PC, they do have the ability to do it, um, but they're only doing it for people who have. 10,000 followers. And I haven't done a lot on TikTok, so I have 9,100. So if y'all could just jump over there and I'm, I'm going to start reminding everyone every time I, I stream here so I can get there. That'd be the that'd be the easiest way to get there. If you guys, if a thousand of you watching right now just went, went over to TikTok for just like a second and just followed Vinny Politan. It's just my name. There it is on the bottom. V-I-N-N-I-E. Oh my goodness. I put three N's in my own name. I misspelled my own name. Are you kidding me? That's hilarious. All right, let me let me fix that. How? Why? All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. You know, you know, you're a little loopy when you misspell your own name. All right. So now my name is spelled right. <laughs> it's V I N N I E P O L I T N. Go on TikTok. I just need 900 of you to go to TikTok. Hit ten thousand, and then I can put. We can put the stream on there as well, and we'll get uh, some comments uh, from our friends over there. All right, thank you. After dark, uh, Jojo Fo Show Show, Jojo Fo Show Fo. Why hasn't Jazz been charged with neglect and lying? The cops. Now, the department surveillance video have been checked to see if Manny came home from the party. I'm sure they have checked those videos. I am sure they have checked those videos. And the videos are at both entrances, the front and back. Um, they didn't say anything about them, though, which is interesting. They just talked about the one video at 819. But they didn't talk about the ones the day before. And that was early on in the investigation, so maybe they hadn't gotten that far. Um, I'm not sure. Um, well, here's the question, you know, in her statements to police, what exactly did she say? What exactly, like what you say on TV is one thing. You can lie. You can lie. You can lie on TV. It's not a crime to lie on television, right? If it was, all our politicians would be under arrest if you, for lying on television. Um, and some newscasters, right? So, what exactly did she say? And was it material in, in all of this? Neglect? I don't think neglect is, I, I don't know where the neglect is coming from. Because, um, you know, once it was like the day, it was that day where she reported her missing. Like if she didn't report her missing and did nothing for 30 days, 
like somebody else in Central Florida, then I could see those charges coming to light. But the lying is is, is a problem. Uh, if in fact uh, she's lying to investigators, Janie, despite the camera at the dumpster, he threw out her backpack. Could be he knew the trash schedule and was counting on trash to pick up to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Or right, if the story is like the backpack can't be left at home. If the story is I dropped her off for school, the backpack would be gone. Right? The backpack would be gone. Of course it would be. As would the laptop. So I, you know, we don't catch the smart ones. So the fact that like the camera is right there, like it couldn't, it couldn't be more obvious. Um, I think I have a picture of it. Do I have a picture of it? It might be right near here. But that camera could not be more obvious next to the dumpster. I've never seen anything quite like it before. It's like a pole with a camera next to a dumpster. Like, who puts a camera next to the dumpster? Well, thank goodness that they did. Thank goodness that they did. And, and probably people dumping things they shouldn't be dumping in the dumpster. That's what it's all about. It's probably the HOA that's doing it, right? So the HOA can do some good sometimes. <laughs> A uh, consistent insomniac, 49. Once he goes to court, don't his charges come out in jail? I think he's scared because he's going to have protective custody. I think you're right, PC, protective custody. Um, I think he will have that uh, high profile plus the nature of what he did. But I don't know if that lasts forever. I don't think that PC lasts forever. Um. To me, protective custody is 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 great because it's it, you you just it's like solitary confinement, right? You're being protected, but at the same point, you have no human interaction uh, other than when the guards come and they let you out for an hour. So, um, no, he will not have a good time in jail. There, there is a, the code is real. It, it's real. Um, so that is a concern. And, 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 you know, the folks in charge don't want anything to happen to the inmates. They don't. I mean, their job is to um, keep order and try to keep everyone safe. So um, whoever's in charge there is going to do whatever they can to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, but things like that do happen. Thank you. Constant, consistent insomniac. On Court TV one night, you said that does not sit well with me. I think it was Sebastian case. Yeah. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, yeah. It's not sitting well with me. There's a lot in that case, not sitting well with me. Um, that, that one doesn't make sense. We'll talk about that one again. I'm waiting for some development there. I can't believe we are where we are uh, in the Sebastian Rogers case. So many days later after the disappearance, I mean, I don't understand how someone vanishes. Like, I mean, it was the same day that Madeline Soto was reported missing, that Sebastian Rogers was reported missing. But here, quickly, there were leads, very, very quickly. First, the phone of Stefan Stearns. And then, you know, then all of a sudden, uh, information about changing a tire and the search for the body. They got the videos. I mean, it was like, like this. Information was gathered. In the Sebastian Rogers case, it looks like they have nothing. They have absolutely nothing. It's a case with nothing. When does that happen? When does that happen? I, I can't imagine that a 15-year-old could be that stealth. Uh, thank you, Danielle. And we've got uh, Navy Mom. The Florida game. <laughs> the Navy mom is talking about the Florida game. Um, so the Florida game, if you're together with, with some friends and you have your cell phones, what you do is you um, Google um, your birthday, not the, not the year, but just your birthday, you know, like whatever, March 2nd. And then you type Florida man and then you click it. And then you, everyone reads their headline from that day. 
and you have a little competition to see who who has the best headline uh, of the day. Fun game. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of fun. And it's like a fun family thing too, you know, in a family gathering or, or, or a little party or even at dinner time with the kids. No, not with the kids because some of those stories are insane involving Florida men. Uh, but thank you, Navy mom. Appreciate it. Uh, a lot of great conversations taking place, uh, by the way. Appreciate that. Um, we do have our uh, moderators on the job today. All right. One of them, Gen X. Some other states are trying to catch up with Florida. Yes, Gen X. And I've been saying this on the air. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And by the way, Tancor TV, we're covering the Slender Man uh, hearing for one of the 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 one young woman now. She was a girl. She was 12, uh, trying to get released. Uh, but that was Waukesha, Wisconsin. But a lot of cases now coming out of Wisconsin. I don't know why, um, but a lot. Like crazy stuff, um, including what was her name? Shabusiness. Oh, that was Shabusiness. Wow. Apple River is another one. That's out of out of Wisconsin. Uh, everyone's putting all right. Sweet foe is putting a little, a little, uh, a little bit of Tennessee in there. Tennessee, Tennessee has. Tennessee is not quite to that level. Tennessee's had some big cases and unfortunately unsolved cases. So uh, that's that's a little problem here. And a shout out to the mods from Flower Power. All right. All right. We're an hour in. Still over 3,500 strong. Thank you, everyone. I'll make the announcement one more time. Please, right now, go on to TikTok. Let me see what the numbers are on TikTok. I'm going to check. Let me just check real quick. I really want to simulcast on TikTok oh, too. Ah, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. All right, here we go. Let me get to my profile. All right, we got a few. We got a few. We need to go on to TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. I need like... Oh, there we go. Yeah, we did get a bump. I just refreshed. Thank you. All right, we're less than 800 away. Less than 800 away. I got to put that in the scroll. Let me put that in the scroll. So I have it for next time. I'm just going to edit that right now. I, I've got to edit that. On... There goes the dog again. All right. Okay, let's see if that works. All right, so I put that in there and I will show it. All right, so where are we? Oh, I'm going to get back to the comments. The comments are coming in fast and furious. Fast and furious. Uh, Janie. We saw the knuckle cracking for control, but he's locked up. Who's protecting him or her? Or what's stopping her from coming? Nothing's stopping her right now. I mean, she has to know. And if she has a lawyer, she would know. Done. He's done. He's done. Super strong case for what was found on his phone. I told you, I think I could come out of retirement and try that case in three days with uh, four witnesses. Three days, four witnesses. Done. Done. So uh, she should know that. So there should be nothing stopping her. And nothing may be stopping her. Like I'm hoping right now that she went down there like weeks ago and, and, and is providing them with information, helping their investigation so they can put together a timeline and figure out what happened when it happened. All right. It is... Uh, this is like a... All right, this was the um, uh, the other case in Central Florida in St. Cloud. I don't think they are connected. They're not saying they're connected. Um, could it be a coincidence that she was found in the same town where there was a federal bust um, for images of father-son um, were being charged for possessing? 
really horrible images of young people. Um, are they, well, they have not. Now, remember, like in, in, in the Stearns case, he's charged for what's on his phone, not for distributing it. And nothing on his phone is anything except, um, we believe, Madeline. So don't see any any connection there. There is the, 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 there's a, again, coincidences don't necessarily believe in them. Um, same town, but was there any communication? Was there anything going on? Now the images of Madeline from what we've been told are, and what we've read are from their home. They weren't done at this other home in St. Cloud. So, um, it could be just a timing coincidence of when the raid was and maybe it was maybe it was more on our radar because of everything that was happening um because remember sometimes in the news not every story gets reported and i worked in the orlando market as a local reporter and it's a great news market i mean the the news stations down there are very good and very aggressive and, and cover a lot of things but you can't cover everything you can't cover everything. And you don't cover everything. Sometimes it's a matter of what's happening that day, that week. Um, but the fact that this was on everyone's mind, I think, m may have escalated our thoughts about it because we and I've spoken to local reporters down there, and they're hearing nothing about any connection there. But I'm sure they took a look at it. I'm sure they took a look at it. And the other, the other part of the equation, and this was something that uh, Gray Hughes, Gray Hughes Investigates, um, pointed out from the, uh, that there was some activity by Stearns on one of those apps where you can send things, Telegram, on the Telegram app, where you can send things encrypted and the signal bounces all over the place so you can never really trace where it's coming from. And, you know, certain groups get together to share sometimes illegal things. So if he is active on there, I'm sure that's another place that they're attempting to investigate, but because of the nature of the app, it may make it impossible uh, to investigate. But the big question is, are the images on his phone, did they end up anywhere else? And if they did end up where these guys were in St. Cloud, then I think we may have heard something about that already. And we haven't. So, um, I don't think so, but you know, wouldn't wouldn't shock me if at the end of the day there was some connection. But uh, as as we sit right now, it's one of those rare coincidences that I don't believe in that I may be believing in. All right, um, I, I'm over an hour, and and the reason I try to not go too far is because I got to have to do two hours tonight on my show. Got to save the voice, the brain, the energy, um, because the two hour show is unscripted every night, true crime, big stories. Um, the doomsday profit trial started today. We're going to dig into that. I've got Lori, um, uh, we call her Daybell, Lori Daybell's brother on tonight to talk about his sister and his brother alex uh, we'll get some real insight into the family dynamic there we're also going to be talking about the slender man case um, that is happening um, and things are happening now as we're speaking so i also have to get off to um off of here to take a look at um, some of that material as well so i've got some work to do for my eight o'clock show tonight uh but i appreciate of course um uh, Granny X and uh, Frankie Figs, and I appreciate all of you for um, uh, participating, watching, supporting, and and now following me on TikTok, which is awesome. Let me see. Let me just check the tote board. I used to love that on um, Ed McMahon and, and Jerry Lewis when they would check the tote board. Such an exciting moment during the, the telethon. All right, how do I do this? I'm going to just reopen it and see where we are. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Numbers going up again. Good, 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 good. All right. Thank you. I will um, 
see you tonight, eight o'clock on Court TV. Go to courttv.com, where to find us tab. If you don't know where Court TV is, of course, we have an app you can put on your phone. You can go on courttv.com on your PC and watch the stream there because we stream what you see on TV. You can watch on your phone, you can watch on the computer, and it's all for free. I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful night. Um, see you at eight. And as always, don't forget to hug the kids.